Both domain archaea and domain bacteria includes the prokaryotic cells or prokaryotes. And there are a few unique characteristics can be found in the prokaryotes, such as their covering of cells include the capsule, the cell wall, and the plasma membrane. There are a few structure produced or can be found at the surface, such as the pillars and the flagellum. In the cytoplasm, all the organelles are non-membranous organelles, and the ribosomes are commonly smaller in size compared to eukaryotic cells. The genetic materials, which is the DNA or the chromosomes, are found in nuclei. That means no true nucleus in the cytoplasm. And they have the small circular chromosome, which is plasmid. Domain archaea contains the bacteria, which is very primitive, lebe asas. The cell wall of the bacteria under domain archaea let, F, let off beta-glycan, and the DNA is associated with histone protein. The phospholipid molecule in the plasma membrane contains the glycerol, which is the three carbon molecules that will be linked to a branching hydrocarbons through an ether linkage. If the environment becomes unfavorable to the bacteria, or we say it's not beneficial to their survival, the bacteria are able to produce the enzyme which is more resistant to the changes. The typical example of domain archaea is sulfolobus species. However, domain bacteria contains the bacteria which is more advanced, maksudnya lebih maju. The cell wall of this bacteria contains beta-glycan, but the genetic material DNA is not associated with histone protein. The phospholipid molecule in the plasma membrane show the three carbon glycerol will be linked to a fatty acid through a ester linkage. If the environment becomes unfavorable to the bacteria, this bacteria will produce endospore to produce new generation. One of the examples of domain bacteria is E. coli. The diversity of bacteria can be studied based on the shape of the cell. Maksudnya, bacteria boleh dikumpulkan mengikut bentuk dia. The first one is coccus or plural cocci, which means the bacteria in spherical shape. It can be found in single, in pair, in chain, or in the cluster form. And based on this assistance, the name can be different. If they are found in single, it will be called as coccus. If found in pair, it's diplococcus. The chain form is called as streptococcus. And if they are found in cluster, it's called as staphylococcus. The next is the bacteria in rock shape. We call it as bacillus or bacilli. So the typical example is E. coli and Bacillus thuringiensis. Some of the bacillus will be found in pair. It will be called as diplobacillus. The next is the bacteria in spiral shape, which is spirillum or spirilla. So the example such as rhodospirillum species. The next is the bacteria in coma shape. We call it as Vibrio, the example Vibrio cholerae. We just focus on a few importance of bacteria to the environment and other living things. Bacteria are actively involved in the recycling of chemical elements in an ecosystem. For example, nitrogen cycle. So let's say the example of rhizobium species, the bacteria that able to fix the nitrogen from atmosphere into the biological components, 
such as the legume plants. The nitrogen now will be found in the proteins of the legume plants and once the plant is eaten by the herbivores, the proteins will be uh, transferred to the herbivores. And when the herbivores die off, they will undergo decomposition by the decomposers, which include bacteria, and return the nitrogen into another form, such as ammonium. And there are other bacteria involved to convert the form of ammonium into the nitrates and return the nitrogen back to the atmospheric, become nitrogen gas. The next example is the symbionts bacteria, such as E. coli, which is an enterobacteria. Entero means digestive system. So this bacteria inhabit the human gut involved in the production of vitamin K2, which is an important element for blood clotting mechanism. Some of the bacteria are harmful to the living things such as salmonella species are pathogenic bacteria. Pathogenic means they able to cause illness among living things. When the livestock such as cow, pig or poultry, if they are infected by the salmonella species and the products are not managed properly by the human beings, once the human contact with this product, they may cause the illness such as typhoid fever and gastroenteritis. And we have useful or beneficial bacteria such as E. coli are actively used in research and technology because they can donate the plasmid, which is the cloning vector, and at the same time they will be used as a whole cell during the transformation step. Some of the microorganisms include bacteria are used in bioremediation, which solve the pollution occurs in the marine system. They're able to clean up the oil spill 